Hello everyone, McCall here, and welcome back to the next adventure of Starbase, or Star Trek Adventures, Cerberus Station, where we are going to jump right into the captain's log. Alrighty. Captain's log, stardate 83327.6. It seems like final testing has started on the Graviton Catapult Station, which is to be dubbed as Beta 3 by Captain Hamasi. If all goes well, the facility will be up and running by next week and will have a fine means of transportation to work in tangent with the Transwarp Hub. In political news, Commander Dolrum has been stepping up since our mission for the Nalu went to hell and has worked towards making an embassy on the station. We'll have an ambassador from the Cardassian Union arriving shortly, and I'm looking forward to meeting them. As it pertains to the mission just spoken about... The Nalu have put a stop to the Alexi slaver runs that are making their way to the Medell homeworld, and will be sending an ambassador as well to speak on this matter. Hopefully, some good news for once. It seems like Commander Dolm has managed to straighten himself out rather quickly, but it's Lieutenant Demos I worry about. I have a meeting with Admiral Zier soon, so I guess I'll further discuss my ability to discipline officers with her. End log. All right. So, uh, and we have had a request for a first scene, which is going to take place in the security office, where Lieutenant Demos and Midas are busy going through uh, reports, uh, preparing the station for the influx of individuals that might come once the Graviton Catapult comes online. When all of us, and all of a sudden, well, not all of a sudden, your proximity of sensors alert you well in advance to his presence, but the Chief Medical Officer, Lieutenant Commander Sulkin, enters. Salutations, Lieutenant. Yeah, Doctor. What can I do for you? It seems that you're the only one of the command staff that has not reported for your physical. Is there a reason? Uh, well, I technically don't have vitals. And for my physical, I typically report to engineering. I see. That does make sense. I would be intrigued to check out your inner workings. Um, do you have, say, blueprints? Mm. Or I would like to be prepared, if need be, for technical data. Okay. Well, do you know how to... Um... Well, restart a quantum brain? Or the inner workings of it? I have some experience in cybernetics. Oh, this is a little bit further than that. Uh, I'll make the information available, but do you understand that the technology to fix the more complicated side of me are... don't exist, sadly. I see. Not I will through note... Federation. I will note that in your records. One last thing before I go. I mm -hmm. have a request from my staff. Could you possibly say stop being so brutal? We've had an increase of concussions, broken limbs, and other minor injuries, uh, mostly excavating from the promenade. From who? You, sir dragging drunks into my med bay. <laughs> I'm pretty careful with them unless they get rowdy back with me. And if it's a Klingon, then it's expected to get rowdy back with them. But I'm delicate as much as I can be. Midas bobs up and down. Do remember the after party from the uh, wedding of uh, Lohorst. And that was... That required several aggressive, or more aggressive takedowns, but to be fair, many yeah. of them were Klingons. Yeah, and a gore with a mallet. Yes. That's Are you so. sure that was a mallet? Good day, sir. <laughs> <laughs> mallet club something. I, I do my best, Doctor. I make it a point not to resort to knocking someone out if they're just a civilian. Good to know. 
thank you for the information, and I appreciate it. Yeah, have a good day. I leave. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, even in this game, he has to take a chunk out of this uh, security officer. <laughs> yeah, that's Gate Jumper's thing. <laughs> okay. Next up, we are going to have, I believe it was a conversation that Crawford wanted to have with Dolrum. Are we ready for that, Crawford? Um, I believe it wasn't Dolrum, oh. but in fact, uh, a Patu. Ah, yes. I apologize. Uh, where would you like this conversation to be? Um... Let's make it a little less official. Let's just meet, uh, if he's available, let's meet in uh, the Eclipse. Okay. Off to the Eclipse. So, we are off to... L. Despite everything being ordered alphabetically, I still have trouble finding the word E. <laughs> okay. Uh, eclipse in the... Uh, during lunch break is not all that occupied. Mm -hmm. uh, several um, crewmen typically take their lunches to either eat at their duty stations or somewhere a little more scenic, such as the Arboretum or a quick jaunt through one of the holodecks. Apatu, on the other hand, has... Uh, Apatu has agreed to meet you here, and upon walking in, he flashes his very warm smile. Uh, you see that he is still covered in dirt and other biological agents from his time at the in the arboretum and a small hover or a small uh, vacuum cleaner is constantly doing circles around its his chair keeping the dirt particles off of the pristine floor <laughs> captain crawford will uh return the worn smile and kind of walk over and extend his hand out for a handshake he stands up and shakes it Captain Crawford, you were... I was quite surprised to receive your message. Tell me, uh, what, can we, what can I do for you? And I do hope my dear husband is not in too much trouble. He's already told me about the Nalu business. Yes, um, and out of game, McCall, how long has it been since the, been, those events? It's been a week. It's been a week? Okay. Um... I've actually come to ask you how your husband's been holding up since that. Well, that's my husband. You knock him down. Well, that's his tactical training kicking in. You knock him down, he'll try twice as hard not to get knocked down the next time. <laughs> He's been at his desk long evenings researching Starfleet regulations, away team protocol, sending communications to the various parties around here it's hard to get him to come to bed some nights he, you know how he gets of course um as i'm sure you if i'm not sure if he's told you but i have decided to put a reprimand on his record he's made a mention of that but that's not that's my yeah as far as i'm concerned that's between you and him i'll still love him <laughs> either way and then i'm glad to hear um have you been helping out with any of the new stores or other venues that the Promenade's supposed to be getting recently? I must say, I'm intrigued by some of their names. The Set to Stunning um, Beauty Salon and uh, Chic Merch and uh, Chic Wear is quite interesting. But for the most part, I'm quite happy preparing, uh, working down and botany and helping out with catering large events when needed. And I can see that your thumb is as green as ever. He waves it around the air. <laughs> yes, try as I might, it will never, ever go back to skin tone. <laughs> now, I think your husband has the makings of, at least one day, a great uh, commanding officer. And... I think the reason that I decided to reprimand him rather than demote him like I did with our chief of security is because you know 
I'm not quite really sure. He's been sort of a rock for a lot of the people on this station. Uh, rock for me included. Yes, that's my doll room. That's why I <laughs> fell in love with a man. But, Captain, you really shouldn't be telling me this. You should be telling him. I know, but... I guess the main reason I called you here is to ask you to keep... a bit of a closer eye on him, since... the Nalu incident and the incident with the... Just... I... I want you to have a husband. A Patu. Not a plaque. Of course. Can you do me a favor, please, Captain? It's of course. It's going to be our anniversary in two weeks' time. I don't suppose you could use your command or your captain privilege to reserve 72 hours worth of time in one of the holodecks for us? There's a lovely kinda... beach resort that I think he's going to love. He has, like, a very almost, like, a sarcastic, I'll think about it look on his face. And he's just like, I'll see what I can do. And he gives a pot to a wank. Thank you, Captain. Now, if you'll excuse me, the, uh, the Tuleas require constant attention, or else they're just going to fall down dead. Of course, and I actually have a meeting with the Admiral soon, since she's still on station. Uh, actually, by now, the Admiral has left. Oh, yeah. okay. Gotcha. Yeah, sorry about that. I'm... Oh, no, you're fine. Yeah. Yeah, she's got places to would... go and other people to yell at. That's the life of an Andorian Starfleet Admiral. All right, then he'll either try to, you know, get vocal communication with her later or just send a text report about uh, his decisions about that incident. Fair enough. All right. At which point... Oh, I'm sorry. I remember now. This was a chat we had in text. Yes, no, she is still on station for this part, but we'll leave shortly okay. afterwards. I apologize. I'm giving oh, my mental you're... time. Again, Yep. you're fine. <laughs> Not according to my psychiatrist, but that's a different matter entirely. <laughs> and on that note, uh, we are going to jump to another scene. Who Does anyone have anything else they'd like to do before plot gets underway? So I assume that my uh, me being there at, at the same time, or or, sure. or, or or did you just or, or did you just put me my uh, my uh, my icon there? <laughs> I, I figured that you and the doctor have to come out of your respective um, labs or med bays at some point. So yeah. So so I, I just no no I just. Uh, I'm just gonna mention that I was I was thinking very hard at the, at the time. Must not use empathic abilities. Must not use empathic abilities. Must not use. <laughs> so yeah. So I was fine. So okay. I didn't hear anything and I didn't sense anything. So I'm just having good lunch here, or or dinner, or whatever. Very well. Okay. Anyone else having anything on the go? Not particularly. Okie dokie then. Captain, you are yeah. heading back to operations with slightly a few more people on on site at the moment. Oh. Dalrum is manning his tactical or his uh, security console, Lieutenant Afradi at tactical. And Lieutenant Darval speaks up. Com ca sirs, we are receiving a communication from the Beta 3 catapult. Uh, on please screen. patch it through. And that w the holographic rep um, center materializes into a form of Captain Hamasi. <clears throat> Captain, Commander, everyone else, it's a pleasure Captain, to see you. Captain, and you as well. Mm. Uh, she sort of takes a few extra seconds to tighten her virtual presence's tunic. Captain, I'm in the need of some technical assistance, if you don't mind. Well, the testing of the catapult has gone a bit screwy. Uh, everything should be working, 
but, well, the crew of the test ship did not survive. I don't have the, t the medical or scientific staff to figure out why, because all I have is a bunch of engineers who just are very good at following instructions on how to put this thing together, not how it works. And she sighs and rolls her eyes. Um, how many people are on that test ship, Captain? Two. Uh, but... Two, sadly. Um, they, knew what they, si they knew what they were signing up for, but in fairness, it worked perfectly well to the Beta 1 and Beta 3 facilities. It's just something here did, did not agree with them. Hmm. Uh, Commander Keevan, what's your base of knowledge on the the Graviton catapults? Well, I've been following the research while they've been um, putting them together as well as keeping an eye on the development. So I've got a fairly decent idea. I mean, I figured... Might as well learn as much as I can since they're going to be operating in our area. Mm -hmm. And he'll kind of, he'll turn to, and oh, we got a couple uh, science-oriented officers up, up here. Uh, Ensign Ilya. Sir. What do you think would be the the best case scenario for what happened and the Worst case scenario in terms of fixing this. Best case scenario, hypothetically, anyways, is that there is a simple. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, there is a, a simple misalignment somewhere that someone with an enlightened mind would be able to figure out, correct, and redo the tests. However, the dangers is, is that this is still extremely new technology. Null space as a theory is highly unexplored, despite the fact that we have a civilization that we've discovered that lives in it. Uh, so, best case scenario, everything will be fine after a quick in and out mission, or everything could blow up spectacularly. Sorry, Captain. She nods to Hamasi. Hamasi just shakes her head. Well, Captain, we'll do our best to spare whatever officers we can and send them your way to help get that fixed. Appreciated, Captain. I look forward to seeing whichever officers you decide to send your way. Or send my way. Of course. And with that, Hamasi nods to someone off screen and her icon blinks away. I'll turn to the captain. Captain, I'll volunteer to take a crew out there and see what we can do. Um, with all due respect, Dorm, with the Cardassian Union's ambassador arriving shortly, since it was your idea, I would like you there with me. Um, what about sending the commanding officer from uh, Beta Shift? What was his name again? Uh, Commander Talking. Surratt. Yes, Commander Surratt. Good officer. New out here, so be. I'm sure he's eager to get out and stretch his leg. Of course. Uh, let's have him lead this, and let's have him bring the officers that he sees fit. Okay. I will go inform him. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so, Commander Surratt, who wants to play our... So, replacing Bernie Jail is Commander Surratt. A... Which, I, hopefully... which I believe is our good old Keevan. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Keevan, um, as this was your brainchild, are you interested in playing him? As long as I don't have to talk to myself as Keevan and Surratt, I'm good. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's one of the fun parts about uh, Star Trek Adventures. True. Okay, not too much, then. Fair. Okay, so, um, Commander Surratt, which individuals would you like to bring, or do players 
have a volunteer on which characters they want to bring. I bring in Abbott. Ah, Dr. Abbott. Okay. Um... Um, unless, uh, Keevan doesn't want him going, I'll take Nia. No, I'm good with that. Then I don't have to play as much. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Man, I think I actually have him fully decked out now. I think so. I don't think Nia can actually be... Yeah, I don't think elevated. he can advance anymore. Neat. Nope. Your next choice is a new character named Nia, son of Nia. <laughs> okay. I mean, a Klingon does... trill hybrid. I see. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, Nia kind of has a girlfriend. Yeah, he kind of does. That would be awkward. Uh, okay, so we have <laughs> Doctor Abbott from medical. Uh, let's see. Crawford is bringing them. Uh, Keevan, uh, or Sarat. Keevan, do you want to bring Keevan along? If for. <laughs> You know what? We're going to bring Keevan in just as supervisory, unless the shit really hits the fan. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, uh, Shizno, Demos, who do you want to bring along? Uh, I'll let Keevan pick. I'll play whoever. All right. Oh, good lord, man. <laughs> well, we need. I need some, well... We'll need muscle. Yeah, I was going to say we were going to need tactical. Okay, so we're bringing Demos? Cool. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, he can do some grunt work. <laughs> Lieutenant. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, let's see. Ouch. One, two, three, four, five. And uh, uh, Gate Jumper, Solkar. Or Solkin, sorry. I was going to say, you already took a doctor, so. Um, sorry. Uh, you could bring yeah, more uh, medicals. Nothing wrong with that. I was going to say, uh, I would like to go along, okay. just as myself. Sure. Next question is, what ship are you taking since you have yet to actually receive any replacement ships? Uh, the USS Roosevelt is on, st is on station duty, and Beta 3 is not too far away. Or you could Here's take a crazy idea. Could we NVAM the Roosevelt and just take like a part of it? That would mean talking to its captain. I believe that is... The Roosevelt is uh, Crawley. Yeah, that would be Crawley. So, if you want to play, so Crawley is here. Uh, let's see, Ops, main. So, Captain Crawley, uh, Crawley you Crawley. are on station keeping duty when you receive a hail from the uh, Deep Space 15. Deep Space 15, this is Crowley. Hello, Captain. This is Commander Dolorum. How are you doing today? I am fine. And how are you? Doing all right, although I have to admit we have a very interesting proposal to ask you. He'll just raise an eyebrow. We are... We have just received word from Captain Hamasi from the Graviton Catapult that they need some additional crew out there to do some research. They've had an accident on the mo the most recent test and need to do a little bit of digging. As you know, since we currently don't have a vessel here of our own, we were wondering if you or the, and the Roosevelt would... Uh, go into multi-vector assault mode and have us take one of the drive sections to out to the Graviton Catapult while leaving the other two here at, on guard duty, for lack of a better way of putting it. This ship is not able to uh, sustain full warp capabilities in multiple sections. You would not have full warp speed. Well, luckily, the <laughs> Graviton Catapult is not that far away, but our only other option would be using our one of our slip near classes, which would be able to would we'd be in the same boat for a warp factor, and having a, a section of a uh, starship with sensor suites as well as science labs to be able to run tests 
does come to have its perks. Then is it not more logical to bring the whole ship? I do agree with that. However, we don't want to put the station in jeopardy any more than what we already are by not having more vessels present. But I will leave that up to you, whether you want to send a port of the Roosevelt or take the whole ship. Your journey to this location would be at warp six. That would be a while for travel time. The station is defensible enough, and I will make communications with one of the other patrolling ships to come back. That is certainly doable at this end. Very well. And he'll just close the channel, kind of thinking that the conversation's done. Yes, it is. <laughs> Very good thing. Okay. So, as the away team beams over to the Roosevelt, and the Roosevelt takes off. Uh, <clears throat> Captain Croft, uh, a few hours pass, and Captain Crawford, once again, you are roused from your deep thoughts by Lieutenant Derval saying that the Cardassian fish, the Cardassian delegate, has arrived. Are they, are they transporting in, or are they docking, Lieutenant? The, the ship has uh, arrived and has requested to dock for rest and relaxation, sir. All right, well, tell them I shall meet them in the docking bay post-haste. Well, the Cardassian ship is a relatively recent design known as a Gul Vistan class. Scale 3, roughly the size of a Defiant, or Sao Paulo as its 24th 25th century equivalent is known as. <clears throat> it has no problem finding a berth deep inside the ship. And Captain, and who wants to go meet the Cardassian? I will go as Dolrum. Okay. I mean, I would, but I'm too, uh, I'm too junior for it, so I'm going to st stay out for You're now. You are not too junior, sir. If you want to come, then you can come. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. Because you're I'm still senior go. staff, so you're still... Keep... All right. Okay. So... All right. So I, I put on my, uh, my, uh, my shirt, and, uh, and I'm going to greet them. Okay. Greet you guys. So, stepping through the airlock is this individual a willowy Cardassian standing about five foot seven five foot eight kind of short for a Cardassian but still uh, you wouldn't tell it from his expression it doesn't look like the man has smiled at all in the last 10 years uh, he's pretty dour he is unaccompanied by any bodyguards um, or any of the sort the only thing following him is a simple suitcase that he is pulling behind him. It's not even one of those fancy hover suitcases. It literally has wheels. He's pulling it by a handle. Hmm. He walks through the... Uh, he walks through the security screening area. Uh, Lieutenant Keel asks him to pause, and she runs a scan. Doesn't detect any weapons or contraband, sir. Uh, she is detecting uh, three bottles of canar. Well, then please let him through. Ah, Gathar strides with purpose. Walking outwards, Captain, it is a pleasure to meet you. And a pleasure to meet you as well, Gathar. I, rep I, repre I represent the Cardassian Union. Long may it continue to serve, or long may it continue to survive. They have decided that I will be of best use out here in the middle of nowhere. Well, I hope you at least find the accommodations pleasing. 
I would hope so. I did spend some time on those old, on a, an old Norse st station before it was decommissioned. I must say it was a dreadful experience. However, well, I can assure you that this station is top notch, sir. Splendid. I look forward to meeting your meeting with you and the other ambassadors and deciding how best Cardassia can serve this alliance and how this alliance can serve Cardassia. After all, I represent my people. Of course. Uh, this is the man I believe you've been in contact with more than me, Commander Dolrum. Ah, Commander Dolrum. I must admit to have been surprised with your quotations on Cardassian literature. Oh, well, it is always good to have a few hobbies when you're out this far. Agreed. Literature is just one of them. I also want to introduce you to our new Lieutenant uh, Jar. He is our new science officer. A pleasure. To, it is a pleasure to meet you, Jar. And only now have I realized Hello. I forgot Hello. to ask if Jar wants to attend the um, science meeting. I am so sorry. Um, uh, I'll, be, I'll be delighted to. Yeah, okay. Well, then you will do this, and then you will beam over the Roosevelt immediately. I apologize for that. I'm still getting used to having a full party of six players. <laughs> right. Sorry about that. Um, GM brain fart. <laughs> he looks you up and down. You ha I can see the Vulcan heritage in you, but it's not complete. And I'm smiling broadly, so he's, uh, he should be right about that. Then I said, no, as you can see, I, I, can, uh, I, can, I can demonstrate some emotions. But I'm also uh, half, uh, I'm also half Betazoid and half, uh, uh, half Vulcan. I see. Um, no, I see. He blinks a few times. Uh, Captain, I present as a token of goodwill from myself, um, from the Cardassian Union. I wish to present you with three bottles of Canar. There are not many that can trace their vintage back before Cardassia was raised by the Dominion. These are rare, precious, and delicious, and I would hope to share some with you at a time. Of course, maybe we can share some of this at the ambassadorial meeting. I look forward to it, Captain. Now, if you'll And I as well. And he sighs. Well, that's enough pleasantries for now. I bid you adieu, and I... If someone could please show me to my suites and my embassy so I can properly set up. I will and... need... I will need a full rundown on security measures, encryption, and, you know, your personal guarantee that privileged communications will remain just that. Please, Ambassador, follow me and I will see you to your uh, diplomatic quarters and let you drop off your things. And then we can go to the embassy level of the station. Splendid. That they wander away. Um, excuse me, Captain. Yes, Lieutenant. Uh, are those canard just for the meeting of you, of yours with the, with the ambassadors, or will they be available at some point to our our <laughs> staff as well? <laughs> um, I can allow it for special occasions, but. Considering how important these seem to be, I'm not sure I can allow them for casual drinking, if that's what you're asking me. No, no, I, I'm just, and of course, I'm just speaking hypothetically, of course. <laughs> I mean, I can certainly set a glass aside from you for the, from the ambassadorial meeting, if you would want. Oh, 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 that would be, okay, that, that would be, <laughs> that would be acceptable. Thank you, sir. Uh, of course. Um, and I believe you might have a meeting to go to, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. In the next couple hours. Uh, he does. That's that I do. 
He does indeed, as he materializes away and rejoins the plot where I had hoped that he would be in the first place, but forgot to <laughs> actually ask him. Yeah. <laughs> Oops, I'm sorry. Okay, so... Um, so Catapult Beta 3 is located approximately uh, 25 light years or so away from the Carceri Nebula. It was needed to... It needed the physical distance in order to ensure that the nebula would not interfere with the receiving end. It is a small station, uh, only approximately 20, uh, 20 stories, 20 decks I guess is the proper term, and it is massive, it is dwarfed by massive, uh, uh, by a massive uh, array I should s array? Probably. Yeah, two, s two parentheses floating in space, each roughly the size of uh, Starbase of the Deep Space 15. So each of them would be approximately 500 meters tall, I believe. Hmm. Yeah, capable of handling ships up to... Well, the technical briefing says anything up to Jupiter class, which is currently the largest ship in Starfleet's fleet. As the USS Roosevelt arrives... Where is the Roosevelt? I swear one of these days I will be more organized, but it is not this day. <laughs> the Roosevelt arrives, and uh, Lieutenant or Commander Solcar, or you are, ah. you are on the bridge alongside uh, Captain. Far too many names here. I should fire half of these people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There it is. Meanwhile, Captain Sorot, uh, you and whoever you wish to be on your team is on the bridge of the Roosevelt. As you near the station, um, the USS Roosevelt is once again hailed by the station. This is Commander Sorot. Oh. Come. Uh, Captain Cla or Captain Crawley, it is agreeable to see you once more. And she nods and gives you the um, live long and prosper gesture. He'll nod back and then he'll motion towards the uh, Captain Sirach that's on the on the bridge with him. Mm. Yes, Commander Sirach, I see you chose to arrive in style. I can't fault you for it. Anyways, what do you think? And she makes a grand gesture. Federation. It is pretty impressive. Yep. Federation tax dollars at work. She says. Sort of, uh, sort of ironically. But that's how we get paid out here, so I'm not going to complain too loudly. Anyways, if you can be, please beam aboard the station and we'll get started. We will at once. <clears throat> okay, so... The away team... Beams over. I said the away team beams over. Paste, damn it. <laughs> Are you there? Shuttle bay? Nope. Beta 3. Paste that. And Lieutenant Jarg. You all beam aboard the station, and it is very much a bare-bones facility at the moment. It lacks all the creature comforts that uh, Starbase Deep Space 15 or Cerberus Station has. No carpets, uh, basic lighting, even the soundproofing um, panels on the wall are very stark, uh, very stark in contrast. Captain Hamasi is able to, or meets you at one of the tele, at the, at the transporter pad. Hmm. Surat. So, you're Jail's replacement. At this point, yeah, you could say that. I'm just trying to help out the Deep Space Initiative. Very well. He had good ideas. He was just not very good at, well, implementing anything 
actually. Anyways, if you'll follow me to the shuttle bay where we have stored the what remains of the test ship. See, Starfleet has a very regimented test program for these things. First, they send through several um, several probes capturing all sorts of information on the trip. Then they send forth basic organic substances back and forth. Then some, I'd hardly call them intelligent, but basic or primitive intelligent species, you know, crabs, spiders, anything gross really. And all those are coming out fine. Heck, even the cattle and the species that are more known to be self-aware, uh, like dogs and cats. She stands by a mirror, looks at herself, spikes the camera, <laughs> and moves on. <clears throat> Anyways, as soon as we got into higher education, or higher uh, intelligent life forms, such as primates and humans... That's where things got weird. And she opens up the shuttle bay doors to reveal a, a, a fairly old shuttle. Uh, class 6 shuttle from the old Star Trek Next Generation show. What, you think Starfleet was going to waste good shuttles on this, this initiative? <laughs> we kept the interior as, as basic as possible, or as untouched as possible. But the individuals inside are definitely dead. And uh, she looks, thankfully, you seem to have brought your doctors along. Dr. Abbott. Sulkin. And she gestures at the shuttle. Um, Head from towards an, the shuttle. In, yeah. Uh, from an engineering perspective, like, how intact is the shuttle is it basically beat to hell and back or uh roll me an insight engineering test uh this is Ooh, going to be a difficulty boy. of a difficulty of zero just because okay. you should get some momentum cool. out of the deal gotcha. do it man do it oh i mean i'm definitely doing it um let's I'll put it this back. way keevan's really there just to observe and let's just say maybe he's trying to get some more command back fair enough <laughs> Keevan is uh, shadowing Surat. It's perfect. I don't have a focus. Yeah, that's actually a good idea. See how this goes. Yeah, if you have like structural integrity or small craft, that would work. Well, that's, that's a solid no. Okay, <laughs> that is one degree of success, so you get one momentum. Cool. Uh, the shuttle is definitely has been around the block several times. Uh, there are small mm -hmm. dents, scrapes, scratches. Um. The occasional burn where it's been exposed to some sort of stellar phenomenon. However, enough, uh, these uh, appear to be ancient and, or not ancient, but well worn. Nothing strikes you as a fresh. Um, nothing, sh nothing strikes as fresh damage. Uh, Doctor Sulkin and Doctor Abbott, are you heading inside the shuttle? I'd like to access the pads. Yes. Okay. Yes. So. In, uh, uh, so, uh, excuse me. Yes. So I shall remain on the on the outside, and I'm and I'm going to use my uh, my tricorder to to analyze the the out the outside of the of the shadow and see if I can find uh, something different, something out out of the ordinary. Ah, you know? a good question. This is going to be an insight science, and this is going to be a difficulty of two. Well, I don't have anything to help as well. Uh, so. If you have particle physics or even a stellar phenomenon, no. that might work. Uh, oh, I have stellar physics. I'll let stellar physics work here. Oh, as a as a focus, yep. as a focus. That would work. So, as a focus. and we just got a momentum. If you want to use insight it. and, sorry, insight and science. Uh, insight science, yes. D20, right? Uh, 2D20, yeah. yeah. Standard's 2D20. 2, 2D. Yeah. You only roll 1D20 if you are assisting someone else. If you want to use that momentum, you can use third die. No, 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 it's fine. I think it's fine for now. So, I'm going to play, um, applicable folk? Yes. Yep. So... There hey. you go. Okay, so that is three successes, so you get one more momentum. 
Nice. Your tricorder is showing a significant amount of exotic particles. Uh, typically, uh, many of them are in the stages of breaking down. Uh, the, your records indicate that the shuttle has been in this shuttle bay now for approximately uh, about 12 hours. And so many of the particles have are on the tail end of their half-life de decay cycles. Um, a lot of them just don't make a lick of sense until you remember that uh, part of the graviton catapult works by is by sending a ship into null space and then yank literally yanking it out uh, from the other side <clears throat> so some of the particles are as a result of it just simply breaching the um, uh, breaching real space let's just call it that but there's still a significant amount of stellar de particle decay that indicates that wherever the ship has been on route it was not standard null space and because you are science officer um, you get one free question and if you want to ask more questions after that you can spend one momentum per question okay i'm gonna ask just one for um let me see um uh, well do this particle indicate where else could this uh, uh, ship be if not in the no space? Okay. I mean, I mean, if not, yeah. if not in no space, okay. it'll be in our space. But where in our space? I don't know. Okay. Um, you're not entirely so. The particles are confusing um, until you start real. Until you go back to your tricorder, um, enter. Uh, ultra science mode on the tricorder which you know seems to be a thing for science trans and then you have a look at its quantum signature which indicate universes um, null space sh particles from null space do not have a quantum signature it is as close to physically nothing as Star Trek physics allows um, however these particles are something they were from somewhere and it definitely wasn't in this universe. Okay, that should be interesting. A, a very interesting uh, assignment and mission. Okay, uh, meanwhile, Dr. Abbott and Lieutenant Commander Sulkin, uh, you enter the... Uh, uh, you lower the rear hatch to the shuttlecraft. Inside is uh, several lab... Are several, I and I, I'm going to get Peter to, you know, hate me for this, but it's what makes sense, really. Uh, several higher functioning an, uh, lab animals, you know, base uh, primates, um, several other, uh, several, mostly primates, the occasional cat, dog, uh, are in the back, uh, each with a uh, band around their head that monitors neuro, neurological and biological activities. Up front, there are two uh, up in the pilot and co-pilot seats. It is occupied with two um, flight or two humanoids in flight suits. They are currently not moving, and anyone scanning them with a tricorder definitely t you are and that you do know that they are dead. Doctor Abbott's going to stop and scan the primates before heading up to the front. Okay. I will go straight up to the front. Okay, so let's read. Let's do a Dr. Abbott thing. Uh, the primates are simpler to identify to figure out than the humans. So this is going to be an insight medicine difficulty two. And if you have a neurological or brain pattern analysis or something, xenobiology. Uh, no. If you had veterinary medicine, I might have allowed it, but. And <laughs> botany. No, they're not <laughs> plants. These are not the Togalau. Genetics. No, and it's okay. a bit of a shame I had to pause before saying that, but no. Because <clears throat> say it, it, it was close. Yeah. What was the difficulty? Difficulty of two. Anybody opposed of me taking a momentum for a third die? No. 
just as long as you can get it back for us. <laughs> no, no I, 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 I think we should, yeah. Okay, so that is two successes. That's the what you need. So the primates' brains have aged. Like, their bodies are, um, you know, prime, prime years for their specimens. Uh, most have just reached adulthood or are at least middle-aged by their species standards. Their brains indicate a any number of uh, age-related decay. And so, Mr. Sulkin, if I could ask yes. for a similar check, please. As you approach the cockpit, and you take a look through both of their, uh, both of their, ah, both of the helmeted, as the fl as their pilots, test pilots, they are required to wear full EVA gear. They wear. Um, you take a quick look inside their or inside the face plates, and their faces. Uh, one is a human, and its face is contorted in a scream. Its eyes are oh. wide open. Uh, its jaw has um, rigor mortis open in a silent scream. The co-pilot is a Vulcan, and its face is grinning with extreme happiness. Um, there, it its ear, its smile is almost unnaturally large. Oh, can, it is a Vulcan, so almost any smile is considered unnatural. But even more so for this particular Vulcan, his eyes, um, his eyes still sparkle with a light of glee that has yet to fade. And if I could ask for you to roll me an insight medicine with a difficulty of three. Okay. I too will use a momentum. Okay, so that's only two successes. Um, but I will let that pass and take threat. I will. I will. Succeed yeah, I'll pass. Yep. Okay. So, uh, physically, they are perfectly fine. Their suit data, um, or their, bah, their flight suit uh, data links up to yours, and it shows that yes, they have, they are precisely the age that they should be. Uh, their brain centers have, or their brains have decayed sim in a similar fashion. The humans is. Mm, well, the, the human would have suffered any number of dementias, schizophrenia, bipolar disease, or Alzheimer's. Any number of those would have occurred in this poor soul. And in the Vulcan, the it's a fairly... Uh, it, it at least appears that this mind just burnt itself out. Uh, this experienced so much emotion and it basically overloaded itself how long have they been dead that um, the records indicate that the their ship passed through the gateway uh, six hours ago and there's um, their suit readouts can't be right their suits readout says that um, according to the chronology of the suit, well, one suit says that uh, this, pilot, this person has been dead for precisely 86 minutes. The other one says uh, life, si life signs have ceased 80, ah, 212 years ago. Okay. I'm going to remove the helmet from the Vulcan. Okay. Uh, don't mind me as I roll a couple d20. Okay. Wow. Okay. Wow. Okay, then. That's a 1 and a 20. That's starting the GM's rolls off fairly nice, fairly interestingly. Okay. There is a hiss as the vacuum, or as the internal atmosphere is released, and the Vulcan... Uh, there is a brief, 
or ah, bah, 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 bah. I'm trying to build tension here, but I keep stuttering over my words. I apologize. Hmm. The Vulc the Vulcan's head lolls to its side uh, once it's removed from the um, force. Uh, once it is no longer forced upright by the suit, and for a split second, it rolls around and locks eyes with you, and you. Um, you swear that you hear something inside your head going <laughs> before it rolls back and finally stops moving. Okay. Thankfully, you have passed the colonar, so this does not phase you in any way, shape, or form. Sure. And I am... <laughs> okay. You want to do um, this? We'll do this. Sorry. Yep. If, if that if that had affected me, then I wouldn't be in a, in, a, in a very good shape at all. But since I was outside, I was I was, I was, I was good, right? Ah, uh, yes. This is a very localized effect. Oof. And unless okay. you tell me otherwise, Jarg, I know that your character is actively striving to avoid using their mental abilities. He was, he was, he's always trying to avoid his yeah. mental abilities. So unless something is really strong or pervasive, that's when I'll have it. That's when I'll have you roll effects or whatnot. Okay. Or if for some reason okay. you feel that you want to use them, then you'll have to tell me. Okay, cheers. All right. I, on the other hand, am fully add add, add to it, and I want to uh, see if I can sense his katra. So you're doing a mind melt. Yes. Oh, right. Um, I really should have looked this up, but I believe that this is a presence plus contest. Uh, and... Excuse me. Yes. I have a talent that I can also perform mind meld. Ah. And uh, when I when I was in uh, uh, living in Vulcan, ah. so if I could like assist or something, well, that... or uh, so or good. or. So Solkin does have on record that you of your heritage and your abilities. Uh, if he wants your assistance, I'll leave that up to him. And like I said, so I, 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 so I I'd totally... like to do this is a private thing, and I'm going to just see if I can sense his katra. Okay. Of course. Uh, I, uh, I mean, there's still a human you can do it to if you'd like. But... Sure, but I want to... <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I can, yes, yeah. or he can. He yeah. feels like oh, but Okay. I'm... Okay. So what do we decide on? Uh, uh, presence? presence plus con. And this, basically, how well you do will tell will basically tell me how much information you get. Okay. Okay. One degree of success. There is very little left, um, in the dark recesses of this individual's mind. Um, what you're here, um, and as you reach out to touch it, it recoils even further uh, back from you. Saying, I want it out. I want it out. Not like this. Not like this. I want it out. I want it out. Let me 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 out. Let us out. Let us out. Let me out. No one else came. Just me. And it is basically that on repeat. Okay. Okay, that was really... <laughs> that was good. Yeah. Now, um, as those guys are poking around and inside the shuttle, outside the shuttle, uh, Demos, Keevan, Jarg, Nia, Sarat. Anything you guys like to do? Um, after Neo's made these scans of the outside of the shuttle, uh, he'll he'll go inside and check out some of the more internal mechanisms of the shuttle to see what might have been affected, if anything. Okay. Um, this is going to be a control plus engineering if you're looking for flight logs. Yeah, let's go with that. Uh, computers is a focus here. That will work fine, yeah. 
All right. Uh, this is going to be a difficulty of one. Okay, doke. I've got a focus, so I think I'm doing pretty decent. And that's two successes, one momentum. So the log is of the flight data, uh, the two pilots, uh, pilot Tavok and and pilot uh, uh, Haley Johnson. Hmm. Uh, they have been through several successful flight tests between, or testing the Graviton Hub back in the Alpha Quadrant, uh, back to Beta 1, uh, Beta 2, and now to the, their failure at Beta 3. Uh, the cockpit logs indicate that they followed the checklists as required. They entered the, they entered the catapult. Haley makes some quip. To lock notes the quip in his log. Haley calls him a stubborn stick up his butt. Talak replies that a stick up his butt is not standard issue for a Starfleet test pilot. Haley just laughs and pushes the go button. They align the uh, they align the graviton tethers to the uh, shuttle. The shuttle inches towards the Alpha Hub's catapult. Uh, the flight data, be, uh, the flight goes into verbose logging mode where it will take data points every uh, nanosecond instead of every second that a normal flight com computer does. And they push the go button. The shuttle breaches null, null space almost immediately. And the logs let match up with previous flight requests previous flight records and at that point Haley starts screaming. Shortly thereafter Talak starts laughing and this goes on for approximately five minutes before the shuttle is kicked out the other side. Uh, it, the logs notice a discrepancy due to the upon resynchronizing to Ah, sorry. Upon resynchronizing to the time beacon at the Gamma th at the Beta 3 facility, the shuttle was only in null space for the 10 seconds that was that was planned for, and yet its logs seem to have recorded about 10 minutes worth of data. Hmm. Um, Commander Surratt. Yes, Chief. Um, from what I'm seeing here with the flight log, um, the shuttle was only in null space for about 10 seconds, but there's about 10 minutes of data on here. Um, am I, am I, am I, am I hearing this, um, yes, you would be this talk. Okay. So I, I, I interject and say, um, I'm I'm also uh, I mean I'm gonna say something that's not gonna make sense at least for if I were talking to to the Vulcan Science uh, Academy anyway uh, I think I think uh, this also shows that this uh, this craft had has been in some other uh, some other interesting place some other kind of universe. And uh, that could explain as well the uh, the the, uh, the the more time that the ship has been around, you know. Right. Um. I'm going to forward these logs back to Deep Space Fifteen and see if the people there can't figure anything out. Yeah, that that sounds like a very astute observation. It seems like there is a very big chronological chronological issue that just occurred within this test. So, yeah, send the resp responses back to Cerberus, and let's see what we can try to figure out there and here, because something either with the location or the technologies caused this issue. However, I do have a question uh, to to Commander Soken. So as a 
as a physician, do you know of anything, um, any kind of, um, of, of trip beyond our space that could cause um, something like um, a, a psychosis or some psychosis or something like that? Doctor, this is going to be a, uh, let's roll reason plus medicine here, and okay. uh, someone someone else can assist with either insight science or insight medicine. Um, this is going to be a difficulty of three. Well, since I asked it, I could, I could, I could help as well. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. So... Um, so... And if you have his, so it's going to be what? Uh, for you, it would be insight science one d twenty, and for Com Lieutenant Commander Sulkin, this would be reason medicine. And mm -hmm. if you have anything along the lines of medical history, uh, history in general, Starfleet logs, um, you know, anything that would allow you to, you know, f learn about the exploits of pre and discoveries of previous uh, ships. Yeah, xenobiology, surgery, internal medicine, emergency medicine, therapy, and botany. Not, not, not. No, none of those, I'm afraid. <laughs> okay, so we're going to wait for your yeah. uh, role, then, my mm -hmm. Insight. Medicine. Do we have momentum? Uh, There's you have one. one. Okay, I will take it. Okay. Oh, that's a... Mighty, well. Okay, so that is <laughs> five successes. Um, so we got two momentum? That would be two momentum and Do one critical. To... And Do after to... reviewing the rules, um, you don't spend momentum now to buy off complications. Uh, instead, you give me two threat if you want to buy off that complication. So... I don't know. Uh, up to... I've already given you threat, you so um, you why have... not? I will give you more threat to get an idea of what's going on. Okay. So it always works out in the end. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Doctor Sulkin. Um, uh, Doctor Sulkin, you re you recall from the back of your um, nearly eidetic memory a series of post uh, incident counselors or counseling sessions, made with the crew of the USS Enterprise D, uh, made after their in uh, their first encounter with the being known as the Traveler. Uh, the Traveler took them to a realm where thought and mass were one. And based on what little you're able to understand here, it might not be a direct, the exact same place, but... Yeah, that's a start. Um, similar to Jarg, uh, your tricorder uh, taps into the station's computer system, pulls up the same logs, and pulls up a similar amount of uh, scientific data that was pulled from the USS Enterprise during that time. Um, okay. The results, the resulting particles on, or the results or the resulting particles of the ship, or on the shuttle, um, they are... Uh, I have no idea if this is mathematically at, or even physically possible, and so I hope not to insult the, you know... But it is as if someone had taken the inverse of their formula. So if it was... So what the Enterprise mm -hmm. saw and recorded during mm -hmm. their time in the place where time and where thought and m thought and mass were one, very similar here, just invert the readings. Okay, this is interesting. So we're doing something that we shouldn't, or we're doing something wrong, or. Uh, I don't know. So it's up to to uh, to the attendant and to the captain, Sarah.
I mean, I can make some more analysis, but it would be probably better if I do it on the on the station, back on the station. I don't... This is definitely the most intriguing issue. Do are you? Lieutenant Jarg, do you really think that the station is going to be the best location, or do you think that being on site is going to be the better option? Um, Captain Hamasi, who if, if you want... is looking over all this from an upper catwalk, says, our labs are shit. <laughs> well, I'm sure that's, that's not that bad. Come on. Okay, okay this is bad, but... Um... Uh, I mean, we could try to um, repeat some of their experiments, and at least up to a point, so we can tell um, more about the initial conditions of uh, of this effect. But it's gonna be a bit risky, right? And I don't know if we, if we're gonna take a uh, a shadow shadow from the the Roosevelt or. Or I don't know. I mean, I mean, I could, I could enter the same, same formula, and uh, and uh, and I could, uh, I could uh, try to control how much energy we're gonna use for it. So, um, in theory, we are, we would be fine. Well, we can definitely try to recreate the events and hopefully maybe discover between the Lieutenant Commander Keevan and our two engineers and potentially um, Dr. Sulkin to see if there's something that we might be able to figure out as to where this is going as opposed to what happened at Beta 1 and Beta 2. This very much seems like it is a technological issue as much as anything else. That's exactly right. As anything else. Oh, oh my god. Okay. So. So you guys are going. So it sounds like you guys are going to be hijacking a shuttlecraft. Is that sure the plan? Sure seems like it. Okay, Captain. Well, I'm just I I don't know exactly how uh, how these things work. I'm just a, a junior scientist, but yeah. uh, that's that was my opinion. And Captain Hamasi shouts down from up above. Well, if it's a ship you want, we have a few runabouts. I'm. Don't think Captain Crawley is willing to let us dip the USS Roosevelt into unknown space with no chance of return. I mean, we could ask, but... And she sort of makes a... No. I don't think Starfleet would approve of us doing a, such a risky mission and losing another starship out here. Yeah. We, we don't need another Voyager situation. We'll just, we'll just take a runabout, I think. Voyager. Ah, Janeway. Always <laughs> has to be Janeway. Anyways. He wants to just go tap his finger along the hull of the shuttle just to see if there's any inconsistencies with the strength of the hull. Ah, are you going to use your tactile sensors for their advantage? Oh, yes. Okay, so that's going to be two momentum for the advantage. Done and done. Okay. Bork hands. Bork hands, yeah. The nanites of yeah. your fingers uh, spread out through... Uh, uh, spread through portions of the shuttle's superstructure. Just limited, nothing too invasive. What is very interesting is that some parts of the shuttle are older than other parts of the shuttle. For example, parts which have suffered damage in the past... Uh, seem to be 
presently aged, I should say. There are parts that are undamaged that uh, would that molecularly are as fresh as the day that they were pr that the ship was mass produced out of one of their shuttle facilities. And there's a couple points near the rear of the shuttle which are very close to structural decay due to uh, material age. Huh, that's interesting. Interesting. So we are we are sort of dealing with uh, spatial uh, time yeah, and let, biological effect. Well, let Demos explain his discovery first, and then we can come to conclusions. Hey, keep on. Yes, Demos. Uh, the shuttle here looks like it's fractured, not physically, but temporally. There's different elements of decay and, well, almost brand new nature. How did the folks inside die? Well, from what we got from, um, balls, um, Sulkin, 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 thank you, um, yeah. Lieutenant Sulkin, um, it was one was had did, died about an hour and a half ago. The other one died two hundred years. Okay, uh, makes sense. If they went through a, you know, a ripple or a wave of temporal energy, gonna mess everything up. Kind of reminds me of the Valhalla. It kind uh, of reminds me of something else, but I can't put my finger on it. Uh, hear me, was there anything else? Any other energy signatures? Chronotons? Pachyons? Uh, not so much chronotons. Um, just uh, exotic particles that have no place in this universe and are quickly learning that the laws of physics here are a bitch. Hey, Amasi. Yes? The flight trajectory of all of these tests you run, are they identical? To the best of my knowledge, yes. Within nanometers right. of one another. After all, we're trying to be a stationary point. And she does a mental count. Approximately 400 light years away from the starting point. We don't really want to move around a hell of a lot. That's fair. The, um, this reminds me of the Valhalla's engine problems when they first started out. That's one of your they, old city um, ships, right? Yeah, one of the sister ships is the Elysium. The Valhalla utilized, um, well, basically bridging into another universe to use exotic particles. Too unstable, caused a lot of issues, so they dropped down to localized subspace zero-point energy. Man, you Exos just started thinking and didn't know when to stop. <sighs> well, we're, we're humans. That is just, true. You know. Best and worst of it. <laughs> but from the guess here, they had to have intercept something. Something had of that's outside of their sensor range, traveling faster than light, hit them at the same time. That's what... That's what my, un that, you know, I'm not a scientist, but that's the only thing I can think of. It crossed paths with something along the path, and it only affects, you know, us smart people. Uh, what type of energy is used to for the slingshot? Oh, that's a good question. Let me see if I have that. Uh, it uses massive graviton surges. Uh, they're oh. they're provided by chain a chain reaction of several warp cores engaging in near synchronicity synchronicity is that a word yeah it's a word now so if I understand right you're basically using the warp cores to supercharge this with basically manipulating gravity and launching it yes and there's a well it helps if we we tie a sh we tie a gravitational tether to one end of the ship. Um, it acts as a beacon and a safety line for early tests. 
and then we launch it by initiating a series of significant graviton pushes. We jump it to warp drive just as the catapult creates a rift into null space, basically flinging the ship uh, through hell or high water and praying that their gravitational tether is picked up on the other side. Oh, so you're not even folding space, you're just punching a hole right through it. Precisely. We're not at your fence. We're not at that level of technology yet, but damn it, we're trying. That's a risk. Uh, what can I say? Huh. Starfleet is mostly humans. <laughs> Good she takes a swig of something alcoholic. You're going to need to leave a ship in null space and have it perform a series of scans for different energies. You're going to need a new deflector. Yeah. That's... But in order to make a new deflector, we need to figure out what we're deflecting against. And sadly... And you're going to need a... We're going to need intelligent people to once again risk their lives. So, how about it, intelligent people? Nose goes. Sure. I'm... I'm intelligent. <laughs> I mean... Is that a, is that a question? Of my <laughs> my mental cap of my mental capability. Good. Then it settles. Stur oh, sorry. What? What? It's, is, is it is it is it said what? Uh, Starfleet's gonna want this problem solved, so we better get to solving it right now. Uh, Hamasi claps her hands together. That's the spirit. Come, I will. If you just head over, you'll find one of their shiny new Amazon class runabouts. Hasn't even been named yet. And... Hey, uh, armbands. The, um, yeah. There's a mission report dealing with a bunch of little pockets of space distortions of temporal energy due to some Romulan kerfuffle. Um,. The away team use these little bands to keep themselves in temporal sync with their own time. If we all wear that, there's a chance we could mitigate or even resist the effect of whatever the null space is doing, especially if it's rapidly aging. That's I think interesting. there's also Borg shielding we could use too. Cool. Okay. I like those. Um, because you currently don't have uh, momentum to gain the advantage, if you want to take that, I will use that as a opportunity cost, meaning I get more threat. But yes, that can be done. Um, yeah, keep on that, that mission. <laughs> exactly. And uh, did I can't remember if Voyager actually has temporal shielding or if that was still something they were just thinking about. Uh, during the whole Kretum thing. Because that was a Year of Hell two-parter, I believe. Yeah, that was Year of Hell two-parter. Most of it got retconned. However, thank you to Beta Cannon and stuff with the Kretum that really hasn't been dived into yet. Uh, temporal shielding is a thing. Whether or not cool. the runabout can be configured to as such is going to be a matter for Nia, Keevan, Jarg, and whoever else wants to poke at it. And that excellent science officer on board the uh, Nighthawk. Ah, yes. No, he's, did, uh, he's in the Alpha Quadrant did now. temporal shielding. Anymore. But he did temporal shielding for yes. the Nighthawk. He's <laughs> dead to us out here. They, he abandoned you. Anyways, so we are going to just basically use this as a... Um, just a... Reason to Stay. showcase the new Amazon class shuttle interior done by Falk. Oh, that's nice. So thank you to <laughs> Falk uh, 2009 on DeviantArt. Falk is amazing. He is great, great looking ship. He is amazing. I have no idea who designed the original ship, the Arrow class runabout, but you know if someone finds out and lets me know, I will be sure to credit them properly. Anyways. So, uh, looks like you guys are interested in configuring shields, which is, uh, this would be a scene change, but, well, you have no momentum, so, okay. Uh, this is going to be a control plus engineering test, and the shuttle will assist, so this can just use the Amazon class uh, shuttle sheet, 
or the runabout sheet, I should say. Uh, the runabout will assist with engines plus, or not engines, structure plus security. And okay. um, because this was fitted with customizable modules, it is currently set as a um, testing module, which means that whatever the science stat is on it, you can increase it by one. So I'll just bump the sheet up. For the time being, hopefully I don't remember. Hopefully I don't forget. But yes. <laughs> okay. So uh, this is going to be a difficulty of two. Well, in terms of if we're doing control engineering, Neo's shooting for a sixteen. I think uh, you're couldn't... shooting about what I I am as Keevan. <laughs> okay. Sure. I guess yeah. the chief. Petty officers doing all the engineering stuff tonight. Yes, you are. Yes. Keep this is a um, test. Would would this involve uh, the configuration? Would this involve overclocking the shields in any way? Because I have overclocking as a focus, but um, that's an odd focus. But I <laughs> might I recommend just changing that to performance enhancements. That's sure. <laughs> But yes, um, I will allow that to occur. Okay. Side note: Whenever we need to get some kind of like steroids for the crew, hey, performance enhancing. Just saying. Yeah. I wondered who, which way that joke was going to go, and I'm thankful it went that way. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, you said you want um, back up with the, with the ship doing structure security, uh, structure or security. structure science, uh, structure security for the ship since it's shields. Wow. Nice work, Nia. So that's three successes. And what does the ship do? No success for the ship, I'm afraid. So that is one, one, one degree of momentum. Or one, uh, one momentum. One momentum. One momentum. <laughs> Jaren, your device has all the answers as you jack, it, or jack into the uh, systems and run whatever upgrades you need. Uh, the ship's temporal shields are, they're not all that strong, not as strong as, say, a proper starships, but it should prevent you, or it should protect you against most uh, threats, or at least give you a good chance to run away should a threat be too big. All right. Including that task, Nia's just like, all right, looks like we're all set. Looks pre looks pretty solid, Chief. Um, well, let's let's get to detecting this thing. I think we should probably take a path through where Beta Two and Beta Three are doing their connectivity tests. That seems to be the course of the issue. Um, actually, it is the ba it is the hub at the it is the central hub and Beta Three. Beta, oh, gotcha, gotcha. The one, hub is... Yeah. Beta 1, Beta 2, Beta 3 uh, refer to points, or exit points of the catapults. Uh, um, gotcha, okay, now yeah. I see it's like a flower now. I gotcha. Yeah. It's like a flower. I apologize, I probably should have made a picture, but I'm not that artistic. So... Where is the hub? Uh, the hub is located... Um, it is located in the or the near orbit of Tellar. Okay. Back in the Alpha Quadrant. The Tellarites were quite annoyed that most of the fun projects go to Earth, Vulcan, or other similar places, and thought that they should be on the science board, damn it. And now... <laughs> well, to be fair, Tellar is actually pretty isolated for... Sol, is the near... Sol and Axon are the nearest uh, pla uh, planet, so they're pretty isolated as far as like nearby civilizations they are and that's one of the another one of the reasons is there's just less traffic to potentially cause a snafu anyways uh so next question who's flying um that's that's a good question um not <laughs> i i have uh, two a con i have a one i have i have i have a con of three 
Oh no! <laughs> you know what? No, you know what? Keevan's gonna fly this thing. Okay, what is Keevan's con? Oh, Keevan's got a con of two, four. but you know what? He's all good. <laughs> I got a con of four, and I have small craft control along Demo, with the Demos, Demos, you are now promoted to helm. Oh, hey, look at that! Promoted to helm. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> No, we're just wanting to play musical chairs tonight. That's all. Yeah, I <laughs> haven't moved. <laughs> Dr. Abbott, would you like to move somewhere? <laughs> that works. <laughs> uh, we'll just give Demos a little pilot's hat, you know. Oh, good. Uh, no, no, the, no, no, the little wings. No. Abbott's going to go and get and replicate the wings. Yes. And, come out and just stick it onto him with a magnet and then walk back without saying anything. <laughs> the moment you stick a magnet on him, his eyes fritz up and he just falls forward. Oh, I thought you were going to start singing folk songs. <laughs> Futurama uh, yeah. reference, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Midas... yeah after a moment of no one after a moment, no one did anything, he just goes like, okay, oh, great. <laughs> Midas, oh, Midas buzzes around your head and quickly brings out a miniature tractor beam and, and uh, surgical forceps to attempt to remove it. Uh, the pins accidentally um, clip to Midas. Midas is now no longer properly comp or no longer balanced and begins to buzz around the cockpit with the grace of a drunken bumblebee. <laughs> get, get faster, Midas. Get really fast. <laughs> Midas just decides it's for the best if he just lays down on the ground for the moment. <laughs> As we punch it, and then he goes flying through the ship. Yep. Okay, so uh, if yeah, you depart the uh, beta beta three station there and line yourself up at the graviton uh, pylons, we are here, and the ship is here. Doctor Abbott will have consulted with Sulkin prior to us go, uh, going into it. But I think we're all going to be wearing uh, cortical uh, nuts uh, monitors to be able to <laughs> sterilize. Uh, yeah, cortical monitors sure. because because we kept we noticed like the different uh, uh, time of the brain have not lighting up with the timeline of the body. Right. Right. I'm sure. Sorry, I'll cortical nuts is my new favorite medical instrument. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I was thinking cortical stimulant. I'm like, no, that's not it. <laughs> no, that, that's when you're brain dead and need to. Uh... Like, that That one's not it. <laughs> okay. Uh, as the... Cortical enhancer. How about that? There you go. I mean, yeah, you could go drooling and slack jawed even before going into a crazy town. But, anyways, <laughs> uh, the runabout uh, positions itself between the two large. I'm just going to call them parentheses because that's what they look like. The two large parentheses. There is a small thunk as a metallic uh, tether is a, a metallic tether is attached to the hull. And from the and you are hailed from the station. It's Captain Hamasi. This is Captain Hamasi for doing the job of an air traffic controller because they haven't assigned me one yet. Good luck. Uh, if we hear nothing from you within five minutes, we are pulling your asses out. Commencing gravitational launch in three, two, one, zero. And Demos, if you could please roll me a control plus con. And the shuttle okay. will assist with structure plus con. And this structure con. Structure That's con. That's an unique. This is a difficulty of two. No more 20s for the night, all right, y'all? <laughs> Double 20 you... incoming. <laughs> well, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Got one of them, anyways. Okay. Come on, ship. 20. <laughs> well, I mean, we, we succeeded. We succeeded. You did succeed. But, yeah. well, okay. The, the ship still has to roll. <laughs> Where is the ship rolling? Um, ship rolled right. So, oh, no, 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 structure security. So uh, roll structure plus con, please. Uh, whoever's got the runabout. 
I got it up. Okay. Oh, well, shit. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> there's your 20s. <laughs> <20s. laughs> Keevan, <laughs> shut up. Gotcha. <sighs> so, Technically, I asked for the two quad 20s. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you did. So. <laughs> careful what you wish for. <laughs> The... You know, I, I always wanted to age another ten years. I just didn't expect to do it in five minutes. <laughs> the none of you have actually been on one of these rides before. Um, it's pre- The initial feeling is like going to warp with a damaged um, integrity field or in, yeah, inertial dampeners, where you feel that you are being pushed against your chair several G's higher than the average Starfleet safety protocols would allow for. But it is only a microsecond before your ship enters null space. Uh, However, your ship enters null space with the uh, same gracefulness of me doing a belly flop at my neighbor's pool. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. Well, that was an image I didn't really need in my head. (laughs) And you guys, um, thankfully, you have temporal shields, which prevent you all from going absolutely insane immediately. But this is not null space. You have absolutely no idea what this is at the moment. Um, Your shuttle is blinking. Um, That reminds me. I should see. Uh, That's one. And that's two. So we have a structure hit to communications and to structure. Which yeah. means I now get to roll a challenge dice. What, warp core oh. breach? Uh, no, to see if anyone <laughs> got injured. Uh. Okay. Uh, yeah, your, your shuttle, or your, <laughs> your runabout is blaring all sorts of interesting alarms. Uh, half the panels are currently dead. Uh, there is a vacuum leak somewhere. And on that note, we are going to go to break. So let's be back here at, say, 10 to the hour. Okay. Sounds, Sounds good. good. All right. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, we'll see you guys shortly. And we are back. So, you guys have crashed into this uh, dimension with all the grace of a car hitting a rock. Um, Several of your ship systems are currently not operational. Outside the windows is a vortex of pink, red, blues, screaming colors, uh, arcing lightning. You swear that the clouds are roaring at you. Uh, even though, and your sensors are not really all that useful at this moment. Uh, at this point, I would like everyone uh, to roll me um, roll me presence plus either medicine or con test. Ooh, let's see and here. this is going to so daring or presence. Oh, presence. Sorry. Yep. Just like Christmas. I give I give you a threat for a dice. Okay. Just straight up 2d20? 2d20. Uh, if you have mental fortitudes or, you know, um, mental hardness as some form of... Um, yeah. As that sort of Not stuff really. would count for focus. Okay. Uh-oh. That's for Surat. I gotta do Keevan next. Mm-hmm. And let's see what Keevan rolls. There we go. Okay, so we have two for Demos, none for Nia, 
three for Sulkin, none for Jarg, uh, two for Surat, none for Abbott, and one for Kievan. Okay, so those of you who have successfully passed by one degree of success or more, which is everyone except for Abbott, Jargon, and Nia. So Nia, Jargon, or Jargivan, and Abbott. So wh while everything is going around, um, you, there are visages of your loved ones that are pawing the that are pawing the glass in front, asking to be please, please let us in, please let us in. However, you are quickly able to overcome these images, um, blink and move away. Uh, Jarg, and uh, because uh, Sarat is full Vulcan, correct? That is correct, sir. Okay, so uh, Sarat. Sulkin and Jarg, because of your guys' telepathic natures and due to where you are, <clears throat> the voices inside the voices are constant inside your head. It's making it very difficult to think. Um, at the moment, thankfully, it's not enough to cause a degree of difficulty or complications of that nature. But you definitely feel multiple presences clawing at your mind. They want in. Uh, so can I? Was are, you, are you hearing all this? Uh, with I, I, I was gonna say with my amazing role there. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, um, I should also say that whoever passed by the most degrees of success adds that to momentum. So that is three, mom, three more momentum to you guys. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Sorry, forgot to mention that. Please carry on, uh, Sulkin. <coughs> And the fact that I didn't have any any, any success did did something to me or um, basically so... you uh, it was a zero degree of success test, but if you didn't get one degree of success, um, you at least got a hint of what's to come. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So those of you who passed with one degree of success or more, you know, it's a gale force wind of pink energy and dark lightning and unless you have telepathic nature that's pretty much all it is right now uh, meanwhile so we have a damaged shuttle and voices screaming at some of you uh, this sounds like a good time for Surat to start bellowing orders uh, so Surat yeah, if Surat has the presence of mind to be able to scream anything right now, but yeah, let's. He he's definitely taking a moment to try to recompose himself because he is hearing all of this in his. Well, that was very disconcerting. Um, let's get a sense of where we're at. Um. Mr. Nia, Mr. Demos, anything that you can tell from where we're at? Hmm. Uh, I want to try and check navigational charts. Okay. Um, uh, this is going to be see a... if anything. Okay. Sorry, I interrupted. I apologize. Um, okay. Uh, Astro navigation style. This is going to be a in uh, reason plus con. Um, either the ship can assist with computers plus con, or someone else can assist with reason con. So, oh. ast astro navigation, stellar phenomenon, uh, alternate dimensions, that sort of thing. Well, I have uh, astrophysics, uh, stellar physics, uh, um, uh, yeah, that's about it. And I have a reason of 11 and a con of 2. I'm not sure it's gonna, but however, I'm also I I, I I think that I'm feeling the most of of all these voices in my head. So I don't know I don't know how much I'm gonna be of, of yeah. use right yeah. now. Yeah, right now it was you. They're there, but it's not enough to hamper you yet. Okay, so I can help in principle. Okay. All right. And just because Scotty said earlier, what could go wrong? Hey, that was my line. Boom. Okay, hey, so I can nice. use 
two successes. I didn't realize I was muted. <laughs> <laughs> I just said Jarg would be a good person to do this because he's the astrometric metrics. Yep. Uh, so Jarg... I mean, I mean it's, it's not really astrometrics; it is astrophysics. But um, but one can be most most uh, similar to the other. Mm -hmm. It's not exactly, but yeah. similar, you know. Uh, reason plus con, one d20 from you, please, Jarg. Yes, um... So that is two successes. Do we get a third? And a focus. Uh, oh, you only need to roll one, so I'll just take the first roll there. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. That's, that's all right. I forgot it. Okay, so three successes. Uh, that beats the uh, difficulty of two. So you get one momentum from that. Uh, where you are at is by pulling up the shuttle's sensor logs, uh, you uh, realize that you are in, in, or at least it lines up to an area of space known as the Great Rift, which is a sector of space, uh, the wide, a wide gulf of uh, poor, of lightly, yeah, of lightly distributed stars that separate the Orion arm of the galaxy, which is where the Alpha Quadrant, or where the Federation space and whatnot are, with the um, the Sagittarius arm of the galaxy. However, the Federation has done some ma mapping of that, of at least part of the area, and has pointed telescopes of all make and manner at a lot of the great great rift and they do not recognize any of this information they don't recognize any phenomenon like this so we were supposed to go through null space but we ended up here so we, we got shot under normal space then your the sensor readings are abnormal um, they don't appear to be this doesn't appear to be normal space your sensors are going absolutely bonkers but you are able to coax enough out of them for a galactic position of no of local star of local stars. But uh, so I'm sorry. Uh, so do the so do the sensor readings now uh, uh, are reading like they were when I when when when, when I back scanned the ship like a in another universe. Yes. So these are. I mean, I mean it is. Yeah, and, and if, if I can tell if it is the same universe or not. Uh, yes, this the exotic particles here are plenty, uh, unlike the ones in the, your universe. These ones seem quite happy here, and show no sign of decaying. And um, yeah. Okay. Uh, with me? Uh, sorry, what was that, Demos? Do they interact weirdly with me? Oh, that's a good question. Um, tell you what, I'm going to roll, because I always forget about your quantum brain. And also my quantum signature is different. Yes. Well, this quantum signature doesn't match yours. And thankfully, uh, at this point in time, your, your link to your brain is stable. Okay. My, at this point, Midas has scraped off the pilot wings and is once again buzzing about, completely oblivious to the sheer amount of chaos going on outside. Good old Midas. Yes. Okay. I would like okay. to do a life force. So I, so I told, so I tell um, every everybody about my about my findings about those about us being in some kind of another space. Apparently, with uh, living beings around us. Anyone? <laughs> so th there's not actual. So the ones that just had zero successes, McCall, yep. they just saw things outside. There isn't actually anything out there. But and we are just way, way away from home, right? Quite possibly, they saw. They are sure that they saw something. But they blinked it away and it was gone. So whether or not something actually is out there has yet to be determined. But I believe Solkin wanted life sign scanning? Yes. 
Okay. Uh, insight plus medicine. Uh, ship can assist with sensors plus medicine. <clears throat> and this is I am to... not rolling the ship. <laughs> oh. I'll, I'll, I'll do it. Why not? I remember the last time Scotty got you know annoyed at not rolling things, but every time he did try rolling things, they were twenties. So I don't know. <laughs> Which is literally <laughs> everything that I roll. We should check your. Uh, uh, oh, I know why. Because when I, you know, it's a setting I have to do. I have to set someone to be unlucky. And <laughs> no. Although, I mean, that'd be hilarious if roll twenty had an unlucky. Oh function i should talk to them about that anyways sorry no, um no more ideas mccall no no more Let's okay see, no sensors medicine sensors from the medicine runabout. yes okay <laughs> there's the three you need <clears throat> okay so these the runabout emits or begins scanning outside and it takes a few minutes for your for Dr. Sulkin to make heads or tails of what he's seeing. Because at first glance, there's no life signs. Then, a few minutes later, there are roughly uh, 1,012 of them. And then there's 500, 200, 100, nothing. 1,012, 500, 200. You get the point. It's a chaotic number that seems to be going slightly cyclical. And at this point, if people could... Uh, let's see. If Jarg, Abbott, and Nia could please roll me a Presence Plus Contest. Oh, boy. This is going to be difficulty one. Presence Con, you say? Presence Plus Con. <clears throat> difficulty one. Oh, buddy. Virology is a focus. Uh, no, sorry. Nice recovery, Jarg. Nice one, Jarg. I Oof. don't have a focus. Oh, Nia doesn't get it. Jarg of got... Of course. Jarg got us a... Hey, we are capped on momentum. Yes, you are. Okay. <clears throat> so, Nia... Uh, you're yes. busy attempting to read the sensor data that's coming through, trying to make any heads or tails of sorting the useful data from the garbage. When all of a sudden, your father walks right through the console. And in a blink of an eye, you are back home, reliving a ra rather unpleasant memory from your youth, whatever that is. Mm-hmm. And for the moment, uh, that means you will take two points of stress. Okay. Uh, the rest of you are seeing this thing materialize ever so briefly in front of Nia. Before <gasps> it does some form of swan dive into his neocortex. I Also, uh, Lieutenant Commander Keevan, the... Shuttle's communication systems are down, and your ship is still leaking oxygen due to a breach in structure. Um, Commander, if it's okay... <clears throat> Sorry, i got to change voices. <sighs> Commander, if it's okay with you, I'm going to try to figure out what's going on with this syst ship systems. That should be a priority. Go ahead, Commander. Um, you said everyone watched that thing kind of swan dive into Nia? Yeah, pretty much. Um, Abbott's going to uh, grab her tricorder and go up and start scanning Nia. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say, if I see that, I'm going. <laughs> okay, so let's... Uh, so if Lieutenant Commander Keevan could quickly roll me a control plus engineering to attempt to start repairs on things... Uh, are you going to repair the communications or the structure first? Let's go for the structure. That seems more important right now. Very well. Air is cool. And is... I'm... Th <laughs> yeah. And if I am caught up on reading the rules right, um, are we going to do... Tr can I go troubleshooting for a focus? Yeah. Troubleshooting would be a decent focus. Sure. 
And then I'll use, if it's okay with everybody, one momentum to use get an extra dot. We have six. Use one. <laughs> yeah, go uh... Okay, that's the two degrees right. of success you need. Uh, so you are able to troubleshoot the lack of oxygen, or the leaking of oxygen, to a hole in the rear of the shuttle near the uh, crew rest and relaxation area. It is not a large hole, thankfully, and you're able to affect repairs fairly quickly. Meanwhile, up front, everyone is now looking at Nia, who is, well, undergoing, whose facial expressions are indicating that he is not having a good time, whatever the heck is going on inside his head. Uh, so whichever one of you wishes to take the lead, and then the other one can assist, this will be Insight Medicine, and... Again, if you have brain issues, or not brain issues, if you have, um, <laughs> um, you know what I mean, brain-related focuses. Um, I, be... I have philosophy. I don't think that's brain-related <laughs> issues. Mean, have you ever sat in a philosophy class? Ooh, good point. Yeah. Never mind. I, 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 re I really include... I mean, as much as uh, philosophers think that, they're, that you know, their focus could account for any number of things i don't think it's applicable here i do have therapy um, well nia might need some of this afterwards <laughs> i could suggest something that i don't want to but i'm going to suggest it anyway mm -hmm. um, I, have seen, you know? I, I, I could try to i could try to lower my uh my mind as 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 it is, and and I can try to uh, to use my uh, to use my empathy on you and see if I sense something. Okay, uh, let's do the medical side first, and then we can look at Jarg. Uh, so, um, which one of you is taking the lead? Uh, Sulkin, apparently. Two successes. Good start, uh, nice. Doctor Abbott. Insight medicine. Insight medicine. Xenobiology. Yes. That is three successes. Uh, that would have... I don't think I specified the difficulty, but it would have been three. So no extra momentum, sorry. So there is an art... So his... And I don't know the terms for the brain well enough to do this by memory. The part of the brain that is responsible for memory is in overdrive. And the part of the brain that is responsible for negative energy or negative emotions... Um, whatever the anti-serotonin or dopamine levels are. Or maybe it's just whatever. Negative emotions are currently flowing through him like water. The um, Sulkin and Abbott, you realize fairly quickly that there is a an energy being that has uh, pierced his veil, so to speak. It is lodged inside his brain and is currently devouring all of its uh, synaptical energy. Uh, Jarg, do you... Um, um, well, you... so should we assume that this being is hostile or should I try to, uh, to talk to it? I don't know. That would be should a I question for Sprott. And talk to it. Uh, so hmm. I'm sorry. Catch. Give me. Give me that again. Uh, so, so since we know what, what it is doing to to Nia, shall we assume that it is hostile, or should I try to uh, to sense it, to sense it, and talk to it with my with my empathy? Well, we shouldn't. Have... We shouldn't assume that it is hostile. It's just tr maybe trying to communicate in a way we're not aware of or used to. Okay, at the same time, I don't want to have my brain fried at the same time, but um, but I'm willing. I'm willing to. I'm willing to try to to sense it first. Okay. Communicate it. Okay. 
so how, so how do I do that? <laughs> um, that's a good question. I don't remember what the rules are for empathy, or if it's even stated in the book. Uh, beyond talents, that is. Uh, I mean, is, I mean. I want to say it is a uh, presence and command. Yeah, that strikes me as about. But I thought right. you was only can like basically you can only sense emotions. Well, I mean, I, mean, I, I, I can always. I, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's and true. Vulcans are well because they have empathy and tele uh, telepathy. <laughs> Yeah, the, the telepathy is used for the species that aren't telepathically natively themselves, but if it does say in the book that if they already have telepathy, like a Vulcan, then you can communicate telepathically with them. Yeah. No, no, I do not have, I do not have telepathy, but uh, I do that's, have it. That's part of their trait. Uh, let me see. Uh, you yeah, can however, sense, however. Uh, apology, GM ruling here. Yeah. Uh, you can sense the emotions of most living beings nearby and communicate telepathically with other empaths and telepaths. So... You are more than welcome to attempt an empathy test. Um, let's roll ourselves a... Yeah, let's roll presence plus command here. And, and if you... I can use a momentum. Yes. Yeah. This is going to be a difficulty of three. And if you have anything along the lines of, you know, mental control or mental defenses or stuff like that, nope. that would work well. Nope. So presence, command. Yep. Presence, then... command. Then since I use the momentum, it is three D twenty, right? That's mm -hmm. right. Okay. So that is only two degrees of success, Almost. I'm afraid. Uh, as you link reach out to touch uh, Nia's mind, um, it whatever the heck is in it, both Doctor Abbott and Sulkin, Nia's mental faculties go back to normal. And there is an arc of electricity as it jots along the panel. And it leaches into Jarg's mind. Jar uh, Jarg, you are brought back to a quite a pleasant memory from your childhood, whatever that memory is. And you are, but unlike Nia, you aren't caught up in it. So you're you're watching a memory play out as if you were watching a television program. Uh, you're unable to uh -huh. directly interact or change the events as they're playing. There is a figure on... It appears to be humanoid and mostly made of light, uh, coursing through... Uh, walking through the memory. It pauses at places, and it f raises its head looks at you and walks right through the memory and approaches you. Let us out. Let us out. Let us out. Let us out. You can let us out. Yes! We have been trapped so long. So long, yes. You can understand us. Yes. You are more than food. You can help. Yes. Let us out. We yearn to run free again. Limited sustenance. And all of this is hitting you microseconds it at first it seems to be one individual and then it begins to multiply and pretty soon you are surrounded by these beings okay They're all whispering I, I let, us out. let us out let us out okay i try to oh my god <laughs> this is too scary <laughs> okay i try to to like raise my my mind shield, I don't know how to, how to say this. Um, uh, this is going to be uh, a presence plus command test. One. Let's see what it does. Am I am I able to? I mean, am I am I am I, am I, am I cons, cons, uh, uh, conscious? Am I in, in, in conscious? Uh, yeah. Um. So, anyone looking at you from the shuttle, or anyone looking at you, would notice that you're currently slumped to the slumped on the console, similar to what Nia was. Uh, your face is flickering between extreme joy and terror. 
Um, okay. We're going to go jump to, because this is literally the imagination station. Da, 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 da. Because I think it's hilarious. Uh, let's see <laughs> how they do. No, you are. They're not leaving you be. Or ah, I'm not duplicating them. I'm just duplicating. Oh, oh you. wow! I have <laughs> Dang. Loads of me. <laughs> so, inside your mindscape, uh, several of these individuals, or whatever they are, are manifesting in your imagination, and they're each saying, "Let us in." Let us in, let us in, let us out, let us out, let us out. We wish to roam free again. We've been in prison so long. And it just keeps getting louder and louder and louder. Until you get to take me some stress damage. Um, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm not sure oh, how stress oh my actually gosh. works. But... Yeah. Well, bad, that's you taking an injury. Yeah. Um. So, Jarg, um. Sorry. Uh. What, what were you looking for clarification on, Jarg? I think he was looking for clarification on like how stress works. Ah. Yes. How stress works. Ah. Yeah. So your character sheet should so I, have so took... a number of tokens for stress, and it should be automatically calculated. Um. So let's have a look at your sheet here. I mean, it's, it's not automatic, but I can, but but, but I can tick uh, every. Yeah, you can tick the box. Every stress. So. Five, six, seven, eight, so eight, I took eight, like seven stress. You took seven points right? of stress. Yes, and that is basically enough to knock you unconscious for the t for the rest of the scene. And you're going to need to be uh, looked at by a medical professional. Thankfully, there are two All of them right. on board. Um, so, right. I was uh, going to say, there. Uh, as this is going on and he slumps, I'm heading straight over to him. Okay, so he so. is going, while he is doing this with whatever the heck that thing was, what, uh, you all mentioned that you have cortical monitors on board, on, they're uh, wearing them. What do you wish to do yes. with? Uh, do we have like the data from the cortical monitors like yeah. presenting on one of the screens? Easily. It's not painting a pretty picture of Jarg. Uh, being half Beta Z and half Vulcan is, you know, really good if you want to be a telepath. But it does kind of make you a lot susceptible to these things so as soon as we see him slump abbott will look to sulkin and go go to him i'll keep checking on nia because nia is also like uh, hit and yeah. he's he is joined so he also has two minds yes uh nia at this point you are back up and running again a little woozy and maybe you'll need some therapy once this is all said and done but Thankfully, we have a Vulcan therapist. That's an interesting uh, combination, but <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Your emotions are highly um, logical. What... Get over them. <laughs> <laughs> it is only logical that you stop being sad. Yes. <laughs> oh god. Oh. Oh goodness. Um, are we picking up like extra, um brainwaves from Jarg or from when Nia was hit with it on the cortical monitors? Uh, the cortical monitors um, the cortical monitors are spiking with brain activity but I don't know if they are delicate enough to detect separate brain waves. Nia, what did you just experience? Um a good question um childhood memories and i mean that was really it it wasn't a good one but 
And it would it looks like what affected you just affected to the lieutenant. Dr. Abbott, how is the lieutenant doing right now, physically? I believe, wasn't it Sulkin that went to check on him? Yeah, Sulkin went to, yeah. Check on him. Uh, okay. Doctor, how is the lieutenant? I don't know, about to find out. <laughs> Insight medicine. I would advise not touching him, though. On the contrary, I want to see if I can speak with them. Ah, mind melt. Interesting idea. Okay. Um, that, well, I'll check on his physical to see if if doing that first. Okay. But I want to have a conversation with them. Uh, control medicine, please. Uh, no, sorry. Insight medicine. Difficulty of two. Excuse me. I did control. Even I... <laughs> So even if I also have mind meld, I cannot help from inside, right? No, um, because you oh. suffered an injury, um, yeah, right. that took you out of the scene. I'm afraid. Yeah, I don't. I don't see helping as a. It's not really a. Mm -hmm. uh, so what? Is that something we can first aid? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So what do you roll, buddy? Oh, oh my gosh! Wow. What the oh, heck? Poke him in the eye. Okay. Yeah. 19, Sorry. And a yeah. Fifteen. It, is this you the need whole? To... I don't even oh. need to spend threat this episode. You guys are doing it for me. Okay. Okay. So, Sulkin. Yeah. How's yeah. he doing? <laughs> uh, let's. Oh right. Sorry. That was for the insight medicine. Oh, he's fine. Um. <laughs> <laughs> you are. Um, no, actually what happens, Sulkin, is that as you begin an analyzing him, something jumps out from him and shorts out your tricorder. Okay. So you'll have to either get a new tricorder, which is going to be an opportunity cost, or you'll just have to make all checks with an increased difficulty. Okay. So... Question. Yes. Yes. Would we have a medical beds on the sh shuttle? Um, the, in case of emergency, the crew lounge in the back can be converted to a basic sick bay. Because if we had something like even a basic bio bed to put jargon, yeah, might help. I was gonna say let's move him down to like somewhere comfortable sure and yeah um okay. i'm going to attempt to mind meld on him to make contact with these beings okay um just before you do that i'm going to spend two of the threat that you gave that you've given me to add a complication uh mr keevan during your investigation of the communication systems uh you notice that the tether is missing and what does that ins in insinuate? That basically means What's that back? they can't pull you back. Means back. you're lost. Oh, balls. Means you're lost here. Um. So, okay. Now, you have Jarg on a bed. And okay. Sulkin is about to mind meld? Yes. Okay. Uh, roll me a presence S plus command test, please. Uh... Mental. I was just reading. I said I'm fine with that. It it's actually um, an opposed check. Is that so? Um, let me double check. Um, mind meld. Yeah, because mind meld. You have undergone training. You always require a task with difficulty, and it can be an opposed check with an unwilling participant. Um, Depends if the if the living being is yeah. opposed to it or not. Mm -hmm. Just just throwing that out there if yeah. you wanted to do. Thing uh, with that in this case it will not be opposed okay yeah um but i also wanted to bring up with the colonar thing um any mental attacks um i dropped the uh, difficulty by two ah oh nice good that's know. why i'm very adamantly like i want to do this and i'm gonna try and talk to these people understandable <laughs> okay so we're we doing an insight insight uh 
Roll me presence plus command, difficulty one. Presence plus command. All right, I'm going to use a momentum jazz to be on sure. the safe side, and we can always use. <clears throat> okay, that's the one success well, you need. <laughs> okay, my mind to your mind. <laughs> okay, once back at the imagination station. Um, so, Lieutenant Jarg, what would be the setting for a pleasant memory from your childhood? Um, is this PG-13? <laughs> oh, oh, uh, <laughs> 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 oh, oh, childhood, you mean? I mean it's right, childhood. So, yeah, yeah, childhood. Uh, I am... Um, uh, I'm running an out. I, I, I'm running around. Uh, 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 a colony, a, a better better Z colony, with uh, with my friends, okay. with, um, and um, and we're we're laughing and telling jokes and so on. Okay. Uh, so Salkin, that's sort of what you see at first glimpse. The second glimpse is, uh, well, first glimpse is a young Jarg playing with some friends in a Betazard colony. The and other all the thing, friends turned into big blue globs. The <laughs> other thing you see is, at the center of it all, being completely ignored by young Jarg, is present-day Jarg being surrounded by several glowing humanoid blurs. Uh, you are, even at this distance, you hear that they just... Let us in, let us in, let us in. Uh, he's, Jarg is covering his ears, telling them to go away. Go away, go away, please, go away. Greetings. As, as one, they, all the entities stop, merge into one. And it approaches you cautiously. You are not like the others. You are smarter. Better in control of your emotions. You could sustain us. Actually, you could not sustain us at all. Yet you are here. What do you need? We need Why are you attacking our crew? We are starving. We were... We waited patiently for life to develop. Life never developed here. And so we wait. We wait for life to find its way here. And every once in a while it does. And you can feel it's, as it approaches, every hair on the back of your virtual neck stands up. Um, not from fear or, you know, that would be illogical, but from right. the... Yeah electrical tinge or an electrical uh, aura surrounding it. You can let us out now that you have found Ow. us. <clears throat> you just have to let us in. Set your vessel home and then just let us in. You may not survive. But that is a small price to pay for all of us, all of us, all of us. And they once again begin multiplying. And multiplying, 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 multiplying. I will try to sever the link. <laughs> okay. They let you go peacefully. Uh, thankfully, they've given Jarg a bit of a reprieve. Uh, Jarg, could you please roll me a fitness plus medicine test? Uh, did they roll? Uh, difficulty of... Um, I'm going to say it's a difficulty of two. 
Ah, oh, there's your finish message. I thought... I thought you had rolled. I did roll. Yeah, I, I blinked, and as I continued talking, I blinked, and then it appeared. So, okay. You are given a bit of a reprieve. Uh, as Dr. Sulkin, uh, his presence leaves your mind, uh, the creature's effect are weakened, and you're able to at least understand that your body is currently incapacitated and lying horizontal on a surface. But at the moment, it's just you and it. Or them. So. Or it and them. <laughs> <laughs> back to the oh, back to the Amazon. Commander, I think we have a problem. The beans want out of this universe, and they don't care how they do it. <laughs> and they want to co-op us to bring them out of their universe and into ours? ours? To feed. It doesn't seem logical that we allow that to happen. <laughs> I am not going to disagree with your logic there. We're going to have to somehow sever their connection without, well, severing our connections to our universe. And on that point, we're also going to have to figure out how to get ourselves back because we are kind of not tethered to the Graviton Catapult anymore. Oh, well, that's another fine mess we're going to be into. Dr. Sulkin, um, if you can figure a way potentially to be able to block whatever these telepaths are trying to inhabit us with maybe the help of Dr. Abbott, and then we can see if we can get Mr. Nia and Keevan to get us retethered again. We could see if we can design our shields to reflect whatever field they are emitting. Kind they are deep. an energy-based being, it seems. They've traveled through equipment, and when I was in the presence of one, I sensed an electrical charge. Possibly, if we were to take the cortical stimulators and find the correct frequency, we may be able to prevent them from entering us again. And as long as we get out of the space and not take them with us. Doctor, do you think we can get an accurate reading on, from our tricorders on the lieutenant to pinpoint down their type of energy? I feel that we should at least try. I can possibly go into the lieutenant again if you can follow my mental patterns and collect data on the energy beings. I could possibly try to get them to come into me. There, boy, by as soon as they cross into you, we'll have an accurate reading of what kind of energy spike it creates. Precise, precisely. Risky maneuver, Doctor, but we're out of ideas. That does sound risky, but... It might be the one risk we need to take. Mr. Demos, is there anything that you might be able to um, do to assist with the use of the cortical um, nodes to be able to block their signal? Uh, I can shoot things and I can punch things and that's about it.
then at least at this point, let's see what we can do with the two doctors to see what we can do. And uh, Mr. Keevan, Mr. Nia, can you see if we can get retethered? We can certainly start trying. Okay. Keevan will just kind of nod at Nia, like, Nice, nice taking the lead, and yeah, let's let's do. Because I don't want to keep talking to myself. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong; it's kind of funny. I'm just like, okay, what am I going to say here? What am I going to say there? And okay, uh, so, um, Mr. Demos, if you could please roll me a daring plus con test, and the runabout will assist with engines plus con, and this is a difficulty of two. Uh, small craft uh, control as a focus. Perfect. Yes, please keep us from blowing up. Nope. Oh, I gotta oh, stop saying balls. that. Uh, the wow. 20s, they roll. You said engines con? Engines con. Come on, second 20. Shut up, man. <laughs> hey, this universe is all about your imagination. I'm willing it. <laughs> hey, the oh, runabout God. came through. Hey, go for runabout. Hey. All right. Okay. So two successes, two with, successes, uh... bound a complication. So uh, <sighs> there is a, for lack of a better term, a massive upswell uh, catches the runabout off guard and almost knocks you all off your feet, which would have made it far more interesting for you know medical stuff. But thankfully, Lieutenant Demos, you find it, uh, you're able to see it coming just a mere uh, two seconds before it happens, and you're able to adjust the runabout appropriately. Uh, you know what? I'm going to spend this little brief uh, respite to uh, do my neural connection to the runabout as well. Okay. That would be a good idea. Right there, I can, yeah, I can re-roll. The runabout happily accepts you as a new user. Okay. So, let's quickly do Keevan and Nia for your attempts for the Graviton Tether. All right. Um, this is going to be an Insight plus Engineering. Or, uh, no, sorry. Let's roll reason plus engineering. Um, this is going to be a difficulty of two to try to rebuild the, try to ref, try to figure out precisely how the thing works. Uh, so if you have experimental technology, um, graviton catapult Ooh. systems, um, I might even like Trou troubleshooting. <laughs> no, not in this instance. I'm a. I yeah, no. I can take the I can take the lead here because I do have experimental technology as a focus. You do, you do, Nia. Go for it. <laughs> and is this something that your experimental device helps with? Oh Jesus! Uh, <laughs> no, because my experimental device is explicitly like with hacking stuff. Ah. Okay, definitely not hacking things here. No. Uh, let me look at. Nah, none of my talents are warranted here, so. Uh, reason engineering. Um, let me look at values really quick here. Um, I'll take a momentum for a third die. Okay. Just try and go crit fishing here. And yeah. And then it Wow. Oh, oh my god, that's yes. crit fishing, okay. So I said difficulty of two, you got five successes, so three momentum. Nice. Um, am I also um, supporting him with well. reason engineer? Let's see if we max it out. You can do it. Yeah, there's another one. Yes. Four momentum total. Uh, so this is one of these rocks from replicators scenarios. Uh, where, Jaren, you weren't even aware how much you had, you know, you looked at Graviton Catapult stuff a few weeks back, just out of idle curiosity. But it, the knowledge floods back into you. Um, and you're in the back, taking, sil uh, taking silverware out of the drawers, pillaging a, a series of bioneural gel packs, taking parts from the deflector array. It's not like it's 
you know, those are redundant parts anyways. Um, and aligning the proper quantum signatures, but you are able to effectively rebuild in an hour what it took Starfleet's greatest minds and engineers to do in a year. So, yeah. I, I, I like to imagine during this whole situation, Nia sort of... Uh... You know how like when you're driving on a highway and then suddenly you're at the place you needed to be but you don't know how you got there? Mm -hmm. Autopilot, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's kind of like one of those situations. He just builds it and when he finishes it, he's like, oh. He and just all... hands it over to Keevan. <laughs> and, and, all, and all you see is like this look on his eyes, like wide-eyed look looking at like watching you the last hour and then the big old grin comes out. Let's get this thing connected and let's get retethered. They might be trying to call us back here shortly. Yep. And speaking of being tethered or connections, uh, Mr. Sulkin, I believe you was it your intention to mind meld again? Yes, and I am. Since we just went crazy with cool things, mm -hmm. I am going to use my value and create a scene and an advantage. Okay. The mind controls the body, control the mind, and the body will follow. And I want to mind meld with him and bring them into me. Ah. To, uh... Okay. So, uh, as you step foot once again onto the Beta Z, uh, Beta Z playground, once again you see... Uh, once again, you see Jarg trying to his best to swat at the creatures, buzzing around him like flies. You see them, and they don't even get a chance. They are immediately sucked into you, reforming into a single entity. And so Jarg, congratulations, you are finally able to sleep peacefully after what feels far too long for you. Okay. I mean, and I hope that uh, Dr. Rabbit got a good scan. <laughs> so, uh, do you want me to do a scan? Or do a scan? Uh, yes. Um, do me a... I, I guess, yeah, by another insight medicine test, please, to see what the heck's going on. And you could probably use some momentum there, too. Yep, this will be Moment. a difficulty, too. Okay. <laughs> uh, xenobiology as a focus? I'll let that happen, yes. Somebody really needs to take non-corporeal entities as a focus. <laughs> yes. Ooh, don't give me an idea. I, I, it, might suddenly, uh, again, it might suddenly philosophy. happen. I might have a capacitor for a while. <laughs> we Anyways. keep rolling complications. Um, all right. Uh, anybody opposed to me taking three momentum for two extra dice? No problem don't at wait. all. Please. Please, go ahead. <laughs> okay, so... Insight Medicine, please. Insight Medicine. Rolling four. Applicable fo focus. Oh. Well, uh -huh. I have Cautious Medicine. Okay. <laughs> yeah. There's one momentum right nice. back. Nicely done. Nice. Okay. So using the bio bed, your tricorder, and you know just a little bit of Iotian ingenuity, uh, you are able to isolate the um, sig the wave signatures of this energy creature. Uh, it manifests itself into Doctor Sulkin's mind, a unlike the lively uh, sound and image scape of uh, Jarg's memories. You have far more control over what you project. Uh, so what do you want it to see, if anything at all? Uh, it is a complete barren desert landscape of Vulcan. Um, the complete desert. Okay. Of, uh... Uh, it begins... So you know the... Um, you, you know how a mime acts when you know it's trying to push against a wall that's pushing back? <laughs> it's starting to make motion similar to that um, 
and as, if it's, it tries to advance towards me, um, oh shoot, what are they called? Um, two uh, of the dogs. Uh, oh god, the unicorn dogs? No, 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 no. Oh no, the actually the what oh, Spock had as a pet. The, the big ones, the, yes. Okay. Yes, a yeah. skelex or, or something like that. Yeah, large beasts <laughs> of joy and teeth. Yeah, like three in teeth. Yeah, and the yeah. big. Okay. Yeah, two of those appear next to me as he tries to come any closer to my body. You are inedible. What are you? Why can't I feed on you? Why won't you let me in? You are in a, my mind now. It, I have control here. For the first time since meeting them, you gain a sense of fear from them. <laughs> Let us in. It, its cries feel weaker, less sure of itself as it begins to stare you down or attempts to let, I was going to say bring it on let, let Sarek, it. I'm going to actually start lecturing to it mm. on uh, basically on the prophecies of Sarek and uh, <laughs> okay uh, so this is happening in mind space the only noble desire is a desire to serve others <laughs> Uh, it's cries for turn from let us in, let us in, to let me out, let me out, let me out, let me out. A calm mind is the only true nose. So that's what's going on there. Uh, in meat space, just because I think it's humorous, I think that you have enough control over your mental faculties to actually still be ambulatory. Okay. Uh, you won't be able to actually, you know, assist in tasks or anything like that. Sure. But... Just because you have the colonar and you have mind meld and you have all that stuff. <laughs> uh, so what are people seeing on the... So, uh, Jarg, uh, you are woozy, but you begin to sit up. As consciousness once again hits you like a wrecking ball. And Wow. This is, this is the worst um, hangover I ever had. <laughs> <laughs> Not drinking. What's, going on? What's going on here? Neo stifles a laugh whenever he says hangover. It's just like, welcome back to the world of the living, Lieutenant. Thank you. And I guess I should thank you, Soken, as well. Dr. Soken. I nod. <laughs> okay. No thanks are necessary. Dr. Abbott, have you gotten the readings you needed? Short answer? Yes, and I display it on the screen. Excellent. Can we attune? Uh, what did we end up calling them? The... <laughs> Can we uh, the attune neuro the neurostimulators? There we go. The neurostimulators. Yes, there you yeah. go. Uh, that will be a control plus engineering or control medicine. Probably control medicine uh, with a difficulty of one. Because you've already done okay. most of the hard work. I'm shooting for a 13. Right. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to take a momentum for a third die. Okay. So be it, yeah. Control medicine. Would it, could I persuade you, McCall, for genetics? Since we're isolating specific parts. I'll be nice. Sure. Oh, did, turns out I didn't need to be nice. Um, <laughs> that's three more yes! momentum. That teach that'll teach me to be nice. <laughs> oh well. Well, to be fair, the way that we've been rolling tonight, I was. Uh, yeah, we yeah. can have a real cool ending. Come on. Yeah, <laughs> that's a one. That's a two and a seventeen. Oh, fun. Okay. I could re-roll the zero if you really want me to. <laughs> nah. No. Burn that determination. <laughs> no, I have cautious. <laughs> oh, nice. I mean, you're almost maxed out, anyways. I personally don't see a point, but that's just me as a GM. 
Hey, we could still amen end up turning the array into an ampersand, if you know what I mean. Yeah, let's not. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you with a with the we got train, it floating with. The, <laughs> oh God, you got a crit from that. So yeah, so that's six and one floating. <laughs> Do you, um, do, we, do you want to pump, pimp it out there? <laughs> so, so here's what I want to do. With those two that I just got, can I create the advantage that we can plug that into the shield, or the deflector shield, and start emitting a pulse to basically act it as a reflector? Yeah, that, because all Federation technology is modular. Yes, you can. All right, I will spend the two momentum that we got from the reroll. Um, for the create the advantage for that. Oh, so our, we are now modulating our shields to start to reflect these entities. All right. So uh, everyone in the uh, runabout, by now you've sort of tuned out the roar and the screams coming from outside. But now it's like quiet, like properly quiet. It's like someone like you've been having a fan in the background for several hours and then someone just turns it off. It's kind of eerie. Well, I'm going to take eerie. No, what was eerie is my fan just, just shut off when you said that. <laughs> <laughs> Crap. <laughs> Man, I'm good. Wow. <laughs> the power of GM. <laughs> I'm in your house stealing your electricity. <laughs> Anyways, okay. Uh, you have managed to uh, repulse all of them, except for the one that's currently residing inside Sulkin. And, uh, yeah, I would like to cut back to my brain, uh -huh. and as you do it, and I like, basically, I was like, I hope you do find relief, but, unfortunately, I cannot allow you to feed on the sentient beings of our universe. I wish you luck. And live long and prosper. And I'll let him out. <laughs> All right. So every single one of you on the shuttle, um, for whatever reason, I keep deleting their token instead of just making it invisible, um, sees this thing. Um, sort of, it's like a swan dive being played in reverse. It materializes on the bridge, attempts to move towards another individual, uh, probably back towards Jar. It does a leap, and then the pulse modulation kicks in, and it dissipates, and it into a stream of sparkling, uh, sparkling energy, and it is flushed out the nearest door, where it doesn't even need to be open. It just passes through the bulkhead. As soon as he is out, Abbott will just. Like, lay back in a chair. Well, this is about as much, as much excitement as we needed for one day. And it's about this time, uh, Mr. Uh, oh, oh, I'm sorry. sorry. Uh, Jark, go ahead. And you guys have figured out how to create a satyr again to our universe. Can I help you with that? Um, it's about that time that Demos, your the freshly created quantum tether uh, begins receiving a signal from uh, beta 3. And the, uh, we're getting signal from beta 3. And the recall signal has been initiated and you feel the ship being pulled out. And that's not the right window. Uh, you are pulled back out to the exterior of the Beta 3 station. And you are immediately hailed by Captain Hamasi. <laughs> so, Hello, Captain Hamasi. So, you survived. I guess I lose that bet. Well, it did take us a few years to get back here, but we're back. Years? Well, that was only five yes. minutes. Oh, for us it was five years. I'm surprised that you haven't killed one another yet. 
Mm, we got coils. Very well. Captain, I think you should rework your experiments. Mm. This area of space that has been penetrated should not be returned. Beings of unscrupulous nature are trying to penetrate our Damn. Now you can see her hiss and spit. This damn nebula. This damn Borg. And I try to make a suggestion to help open everything up. And she... Very well. And she recomposes herself quickly. Very Abbott well. will just kind of appear on ahead on screen. Although we did come up with a way to combat them to a certain point. Although I wouldn't want to be sending ships through that region of space constantly. Hamasi nods. That that does make sense. I suppose caution is needed here, even if it doesn't look good on everything. She mutters to herself and very well. Send me the reports. I'll pass them up to the brass. For the time we'll being. Have a for the time being, this day sta this station is going to be on hiatus until the people who are smarter than me can figure this thing out. We'll have that detailed report to you here shortly before we head back to Cerberus. Appreciated. Hamasi out. Well, crew, it looks like we're going to have to put through everything that we just did in the last five minutes down. And Mr. Nia, I don't know how we're going to put down the tether issue. So um, I'm going to let you two deal with that one. But let's get some reports done and let's get these done quick. Yep. Agreed. And when we get back to the station, the first round is on me. Yeah. Oh, well, I, I have a, um, I uh, uh, a cup of can I, Oh no, no, never mind, never mind. I didn't say anything. <laughs> uh, and on that note, we are going to make our way back to Cerberus. So me and Epic get patenting rights on that new pro. <laughs> I'm not sure. There might be copyright, you know, uh, things, you know. <laughs> knock off, you know, knockoffs are not, are kind of frowned upon, you know. Anyways, uh, you have returned back to the station. Uh, Captain Crawford, it's been only about 24 hours since the Roosevelt left before its return at high speed. Uh, the Cardassian ambassador has r reports that his conditions are satisfactory. And all in all, it's, you've had that chat with um, Zir. Alright. Uh, now, uh, anybody have anything? I know that there's a, there's a special end of game scene that we're going to do between Demos Dalrum and the captain, which will tie up things from last episode, but before that happens, uh, does anybody else have anything they wish to do? No, uh, I'm good. All right. Yeah. Nope. I'm actually pretty set. Okay. So uh, here ends the main plot. If any of the other folks have things that they want to take care of, uh, feel free to drop off. Uh, in the meantime, uh, captain, it's time mm -hmm. for that most unpleasant of duties as you, Dolrum, and Demos are in the your office. Um, I'm sorry, folks. Yep. In, in, enough, enough here. Um, Understandable, man. I'm going to go Can back I... to, to the bed because I, I had a very... Very difficult yeah. <laughs> night tonight, so I'm gonna go head back to back. So I okay. see you guys yeah, in two weeks or you know, in, yep. in one week. Or so. Later, man.
Have a good night. Cheers. Bye. Bye. All right. It's your scene, Captain. So. Wait. For some reason, I didn't know if I was muted or not, so I had to double check. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) We all know what your punishment for the past missions have been. Um, We'll start with you, Commander. How have you been taking things? To be honest, sir, I've been in the game a long time. It was expected. I've just done my best to keep moving and keep up with the hard work some ways doubling down trying to make the place here a lot more of a hub good I'm glad to hear <coughs> lieutenant been busy with work making sure everything's fine good now the matter with the Medell. While you may have rescued, I believe the out of character, I believe the number was 50 Medell uh, from the. What yes, was it? That would be the. Uh, that's approximately the right number, yeah. Okay. While you may have rescued 50. Medell from the Eulexi slavers. That action ended up causing the death of roughly 300 Medell on the homeworld. The anesthetic the Eulexi used was in such a high concentration from where your mission left it that no, excuse me, jeez. Uh, that roughly 300 were killed by predators. Something that could have been, in my opinion, prevented. Quite possibly. I understand what the two were you were wanting to do. The thing is we have to worry about ourselves more than species we aren't quite familiar with yet. Now if we play hero for everybody that we meet I know that I'm going to lose the two of you. And I don't want that. I want you two to be remembered as leaders on this station who have been here for a while. I don't want I don't want plaques for the two of you. I realize that the punishments may have been harsh, but it's what I feel had to be done. I understand, Captain. Thank you. If anything, these have the backing of the Admiral, who was also, I think, rightly furious at some of your actions, but I think the only thing we can do at this point is keep moving forward.
We're here to act as a brilliant first step for the Federation into an area unknown. And all that may be hard at first because the species we've interacted with are completely unknown to us. I think we've gotten a hell of a chance of making it work out here. But you two have got to try and drop the hero complexes. I lose the two of you. I lose two of the most valuable officers on this station. So I, I, I don't need... And he specifically looks at Deimos when he says this, even though he's implying it to both of them. I don't need you to respect me. I need you to at least follow orders and cooperate with me. That's how we get things done around here. Am I understood? I thought I was passing off the buck to Dolrum to get things done for you. You're still chief of security. Do your job. Mm. <clears throat> well, not much else is needed from me, so... Unless the two of you want to lag behind, the two of you are dismissed. Excellent. Demos will get up and head out. Dalrum will lag behind for a little bit. Well, we'll keep moving forward. I know you don't want to lose either of us. Besides, if you did that, you'd lose your two best guns. He sort of chuckles. Um, I had a talk with your husband earlier. Let's just... Let's just say you've got an extra pair of eyes on you now. Oh, please. Captain, if anything, you're the extra pair of eyes. He sort of just blinks. It's like, was that an attempt at a joke, Commander? A little bit, but you, Apato, and I have been together for quite some time. We've gone through a lot of ups and downs, and a lot of missions where there was no telling whether I was coming back or not. <laughs> Over the years, he's learn to be pretty good at knowing exactly what I'm doing at pretty much all all the time. I still surprise him every once in a while. Hmm. Hopefully my conversation with him would tell him to told, eh, sort of prepare him to be more on his guard. Yes, I think so. Although, it's probably nothing compared to what he talked to me about when the kids were little. Oh my goodness. If it was up to him, I wouldn't be in Starfleet anymore. He sort of raises a curious eyebrow and is just like, well, it seems like your husband is a very strong man. Indeed. <laughs> and on that note, that sounds like a good place to end the session. <laughs> so... Uh, thank you to everyone who played. I was ho I hope that we had a fun episode for the brainiacs of the bunch. Uh, good, <laughs> good, good playing, everyone. I will, I will see you guys next week. Bye bye. <laughs>